We're at the AGBU Armenia Hall, where international experts and youth from Armenia are coming together to talk about data-driven urban solutions. In other words, using maps and community-collected information to plan better cities and villages. Tonight, students, architects, and global voices are showing how mapping can shape the future of Armenia cities. This event showcases the activities from Data to Change, a project initiated by Hyphen 4 and directed by Sune Arakelian. The initiative tackles a critical hurdle in Armenia's development, the lack of open, reliable spatial data needed for effective urban and rural planning. The data that we gather is bottom to top and it gives visibility what is unseen and overlooked. Mm -hmm. So it has a huge impact in, for the decision makers and urban planners and it gives full transparency. To create this transparency, the project applies participatory research, empowering youth and local communities to become data collectors. This grassroots method is precisely why the project gained the support of the Embassy of Switzerland in Armenia. From data to change was selected because it does exactly that. It tackles a critical challenge that many Armenian small towns and villages face, the lack of open and reliable spatial data for informed decision making. According to the Deputy Head of Mission, by transforming local knowledge into structured information, the project helps communities plan their development more effectively. This vision was brought to life by involving a group of university students who became part of the Hyphen 4 team, including Tamara Khushutyan from the National University of Architecture and Construction of Armenia, also known as Nuaka. They learned mapping from scratch through hands-on training and mentorship from Hyphen 4 experts Sune Arakelian and fellow mentor Meri Pepanyan, who guided them throughout the fieldwork while they gained professional experience and fair compensation for their work. The program started with learning QGIS software. We learned it quickly in just 10 days, then taught it to two Mobox students. Simultaneously, we began analyzing, studying, and mapping territories. In 2025, this model expanded significantly. From data to change, engaged 12 university fellows and 78 TUMO students across six regions, from Ashotsk to Kajaran. Together, they gathered over 17,000 spatial records, creating open access data sets that are now being used to draft the official five-year community development plans. For Nuaka student Anahit Davitian, the work was a process of discovery. It was very interesting to discover every detail, which is what we were doing. We tried to extract new information from scratch, information that doesn't exist, that has been overlooked over the years. Anahit's work in Arani led her to document a unique local feature, the stork nests perched on nearly every house. This kind of hyperlocal detail is what makes the data so valuable. When viewing the maps during research, you'll notice that next to each house, there's a stork nest, and clicking on them will immediately open photos of the storks. The project's founder was inspired to start this work by her own frustrations as a student, constantly having to build research from scratch because no open data existed. The issue of missing data is a global challenge. Sarah Williams, a professor of technology and urban planning at MIT, believes that this data gap often hides critical information about community needs and infrastructure. I think like one of the biggest things we don't realize is there's so much missing data in the world. According to Professor Dana Cuff from UCLA, this missing data is almost always about marginalized communities. She stresses that achieving data justice means letting communities define what information is important to collect. For her, data justice is enacted when communities discover and document their own data. So instead of an outsider coming in and saying, this is the data that we need to collect, we collectively understand what data is missing from the community's point of view. And in that sense, it becomes much more equitable. This philosophy was put into practice by the students. In the process of mapping, they engaged with residents to understand how spaces were truly used, what was abandoned, what was vital. According to Tamara, this kind of hands-on approach is missing from their traditional classes. During this program, spending 10 days in the regions, we were able to fully engage with local residents and learn the unique characteristics of those territories directly from them, which we then used in our projects. I think that was a huge advantage, especially for my future work in urban planning. 
According to Sune, student involvement is important because not only do they learn how to map data, but also how to speak up about the problems that have been overlooked, creating a power switch. Visualizing this data allows the public to see communities in ways that they haven't been seen before, opening doors to civic debate and the change that these communities need. I think the youth and our young generation play a crucial role in mapping process because they become aware of their built environment and they start to learn how they can map their environment. And the power of mapping lies in its ability to make the invisible visible. Professor Sarah Williams points to a powerful historical example, documenting the genocide in Rwanda. When satellite data and ground reports were mapped, denial became impossible. The uh, issue of genocide is, uh, you know, people try to deny it, but when you see it on the ground, how can you deny it and see it through maps? So. Back in Armenia, the mapping of stork nests in Arani or abandoned buildings in other towns is creating a new understanding of data collection. The work that they're doing with the mapping of the physical environment and the animals and the birds and everything else um, is just the beginning, but it's a foundation on which all kinds of further data and new uh, attention to those communities might be made possible. If back then someone was holding all the data and the maps in their one hand, now the community holds that information in their own hands.